I'm delighted to, to be joined today by Andy Stafford Clark from IBM. Hi, Andy, and could you give us your your job title and what you do at IBM? Hi, Lucy. Great to see you again. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for IBM in the UK and Ireland. I'm also, one of IBM's distinguished engineers and also a master inventor. So. If you're a master inventor, you must know quite a bit about intellectual property rights. You've got 40 patents, more than 40 uh, patents? Actually, 43 now. I was hoping to have 42, and I could have done the Douglas Adams thing and stopped at 42, but uh, I accidentally got one more, so now I'm up to 43. I accidentally got one more. So, but you also do an awful lot for the open source community. So can you tell us a little bit about the different types of intellectual property um, and how it's protected and how you use it? This is really interesting because this has evolved quite a lot over the years since open source has become much more popular. Uh, when I started out in my software development career at IBM, everything was being patented. So anytime you had a bright you know, flash of inspiration, you go, ha ha, that was something which probably no one in the world had ever done before and quickly write it down as a patent. And um, we were very keen to protect our intellectual property rights for that idea, uh, mainly because we wanted to use it in products and therefore protect our right to use it without challenge. But also uh, we licensed these ideas, these intellectual property um, nuggets to other companies and we make quite a lot of money um, licensing these technologies. Uh, so it, it, three, two, two reasons there. Um, as open source has come along and uh, it's much more trendy and popular to uh, just write your code and put it into GitHub and blog about it and tell everybody about it, then we have to make a decision uh, each time we come up with some cool new idea whether to simply continue in the sort of the public spirited open source way to um, put that code in the public domain or whether to, uh, of course we retain copyright over it, um, or whether to go for patenting. And it generally depends on whether, kind of on the magnitude of the idea, but also on whether the, the idea is like to be used in a product or not, because if it is going to be used in a product, we do need to protect our rights to be able to use it, otherwise that might eliminate you know, a whole family of products sometime in the future if somebody comes and challenges over the patent. Right. One good piece of news is that if you want to use some technology that's been patented by IBM in an open source project, uh, then we will grant uh, a license to do that. So that's kind of a, a sort of quid pro quo for the uh, op open source involvement. Uh, and that's been taken up by, by many people. There's a big catalogue of all these patents that are available for use in open source projects. So one of the projects that I know about is No Red which is a drag and drop programming uh, uh, language. No. Language, yep. Yep, um, that you can use for programming, and I use it on in the Raspberry Pi. And that was developed by IBM, wasn't it? Yes, it was, and that was an interesting one. We developed Node-RED as a, an internal tool for rapid development of applications um, in one of our services teams. And so uh, we found it really, really useful for that purpose. And we thought, uh, we thought long and hard about how we could commercialize uh, that technology, potentially sell it as a development tool. But I and a number of others, particularly Nick O'Leary and Dave Conway Jones, the uh, creators of Node-RED, argued strongly that the, the best way we could serve the um, advantages of Node-RED and make it useful to everybody out there, particularly in the Internet of Things world, as you mentioned on the Raspberry Pi and technologies like that, was to open source it. Mm -hmm. um, and this was actually, uh, I was part of the developing the business case for why we should open source Node-RED. And um, it actually turned out to be one of the quickest open sourcing decisions that IBM's ever made. Uh, I can't remember how many days it was, but it was literally days rather than weeks or months as we had all been used to in the past. Uh, so Node-RED was put into, the public, into, uh, uh, into uh, open source. Uh, where it has absolutely taken off and flourished. You know, hundreds of people are writing new nodes for it, people are contributing to the code base. Absolutely the best decision we could have made. And I've seen six-year-olds using it, and I've seen 60-plus-year-olds using it, and used in industry, used in fun, used for schools. I mean, it, for me, it's been great. Yeah, and there are actually commercial products that embed Node-RED inside them. So because the licensing allows it, there are a number of SCADA-type gateway devices that actually have a copy of Node-RED stick inside them mm. to for easy configuration of their software. Excellent. Thank you very much, Andy.
My pleasure.